Welcome back to Good Day. Planned Parenthood calls a ruling by the Supreme Court to strike down a Texas abortion law an enormous victory for women. In the 5-3 to three decision, the court ruled it was unconstitutional to require abortion clinics to follow the same guidelines as surgical centers or to require abortion doctors to have admitting privileges at a local hospital. Writing for the majority, Justice Stephen Breyer said the requirements created an undue burden on women seeking to terminate their pregnancies. While pro-choice groups cheered the decision, state leaders blasted the court's ruling. My hope is that we never have to travel down this path again and that I as a physician can practice medicine without ideologically driven politics interfering with what is best for my patients. Frustrated would not be a strong enough word for my uh, reaction to the Supreme Court today that has apparently made the decision that they are the medical board for the entire country, that they know better. This is a devastating blow to women's safety and health. Now in the Texas Senate. Appellate lawyer Chad Ruback joins us with a look at the legal ramifications of this divisive ruling. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for having me. So there was a significant drop in the number of abortion clinics in Texas after these restrictions were signed by then Governor Perry in 2013. Was this drop in the number of clinics, was that a factor in, in the Supreme Court's decision? Likely so. The Supreme Court performed a balancing test. The Supreme Court looked at first the benefits these new restrictions would have to women's health. The Supreme Court also looked at the burden these new restrictions would have on a woman's right to an abortion. The Supreme Court indicated this wasn't a close call. There were very few medical benefits. There were very few health benefits, according to the Supreme Court, and there were huge burdens imposed by these requirements. Okay, Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick has made it very clear this fight is not over. Uh, he says that legislators will be going line through line through the, uh, the Supreme Court decision and coming up with apparently new restrictions. What, what can you tell us about that? I don't know what those new restrictions will be, but the Supreme Court's opinion was narrowly drafted. It outlawed the two restrictions from House Bill 2. The, the Texas law from 2013, but left the door open for the legislature to come up with all sorts of new restrictions. The Texas legislature is a clever bunch. There's no doubt in my mind they'll come up with a new restriction. So we'll see, and I, obviously the, the, uh, their task this time would be to find restrictions that would uh, pass the Supreme Court. Uh, a 5-3 decision, were you surprised by that? Was not. The four more liberal justices were definitely going to rule as they did. The three more conservative justices were definitely going to rule as they did. The swing vote was Justice Kennedy. It was really his decision. Uh, do you get the feeling, you know, of course, uh, many in the pro-life movement uh, would like to see Roe versus Wade overturned. Uh, the law passed, what, 1972? I think that's right. Uh, from what you can tell then, uh, based on this decision, would it appear with this court that Roe v. Wade is pretty secure? I believe so for the foreseeable future. Hmm. So you uh, would not, it's not as if Roe v. Wade would be, uh, you know, hanging by a thread uh, depending on a Supreme Court appointment here and there. Absolutely. If this was a 5 3 decision in favor of the right to abortion, the newly appointed Supreme Court Justice, the justice who replaces Justice Scalia, is yeah. not going to make a difference here. Even if he's an extremely conservative justice, we'd still have yeah. a 5-4 decision. Okay, Attorney Chad Ruback, thank you so much for your insights. We do appreciate it. Thanks for having me, Dan.